two violin pairings. Can you hear me? Guess what? We are finally going to learn how to play chadash and this time we are going to learn how to play it in all kinds of positions. So you don't have to focus on the first position only because you're not a beginner anymore, am I right? So the sheet music is down below in the description box. So click on the link, get the sheet music. I have the sheet music here and I'm going to tell you which fingers I use where and it's going to be lots of fun. So let's get started with an up bow on a G string. Let's see where this is in there. All right. We start with the first thing on the G string, as you may already know. And then we slide into the fifth position. That's a lot of fun. So usually we play the shift. Like this, yeah. We leave the first finger on a string until we arrive in the first position and then we put down the fourth finger. But this time we want to do it differently. We want to slide in with a fourth finger. Yeah, this piece is full of slides. So. Hi Cecilia, welcome. So. Let's try And how you practice is you just slide slowly from the fifth, uh, from the first position into the fifth. This is your exercise. And in order to do it smoothly, you have to let go of the finger. You shouldn't press down all the time while you're sliding. Let go and then you slide. And then when you arrive, you press down the string again. So it doesn't sound like all the time. Yeah, so this is how you practice. Just so that you know where to stop. Okay, but then when we play it, Actually, we do press down a string because we want our audience to hear the slide. Okay, and then we stay in the fifth position. And then we stretch our fourth finger, unless you want to do another slide. <laughs> Might be a little bit too much. So you stretch your fourth finger. We're still on the G string. So we're playing B flat with a fourth finger. And then we slide down back into the first position. <laughs> if it's too much for you, you can just do a gentle one, an elegant shift. So nobody hears it, but if you like sliding around, you could do. And then we go back up into the fourth position. So third finger and then second finger in the fourth position. Whether you want to slide in or not, you either go up with a third finger or you slide in with a second finger. Yeah, 
So you decide what you want to do. And then we go back into the third position by stretching our first finger. Yeah, and going down with our arm. And stay in the third position. So make sure not to spend all the bow at once. And then you have nothing left. So yeah, leave enough bow so that you can get stronger. Same thing again for the finger for the B flat. And back into the first position. To the third position now. So this is a lot of fun. Make sure you stay on the G string all the time. Make sure you take your arm out. Yeah. Take it nearer to your body so that your fingers are relaxed. And then we carry on with the C. Another slide. You could also play it on the E string. That's also possible. You could probably play it on the G string as well. If you wanted to. I really like this one. So here is the first finger on a D string is high and the first finger on an A string is low. So, so practice this slowly. Hi everybody, welcome. And practice back. several times. This is your exercise. And somebody asked me the other day how to make practicing slowly more exciting. You can dance while practicing. I made a video about it on my Instagram yesterday. You can do so many fun things while practicing slowly. You can do all kinds of accents. Silly, have a lot of fun and try again, and then try a bit faster. So, after going into the third, after sliding into the third position, we stay there. you can try different fingerings. There are so many possibilities. 
and you can fry a different fingering each time. Okay. For example, yeah, you could go up on a D string, or you could just simply stay in the first position. And then go back into the second. Then you're playing the F for the fourth finger. You could slide in for the second F into the third position. Or you could go on a D string. So you could go into the seventh position on a D string and then you could stay in D string okay play the B flat with the second finger or with the first finger and then go back Here you could do something, you could improvise so much in this piece. For example, it says a piacere, it means crying. Yeah, so you could go. Yeah, so it sounds like, oh, you don't want to say goodbye to the notes. You want to stay with each note. Yeah, you're holding tight. You want to. Yeah, so you could do that. And then you arrive in a third position if you choose this fingering. Then you stay in the third position. Here you could slide in again. Yeah. With the fourth finger. And then we have uh, four notes, four notes in the third position and four notes in the first position. But it's actually eight notes because we have grace notes here. and then we repeat the whole thing and this time you could play different fingering you know in a baroque period um, if you repeated a piece of music and if you played it the same both times is considered to be bad taste. So try to change it up a little bit. Try to play different fingering or different expression, whatever comes to mind. Your, your creativity is like totally free, especially in this piece. And uh, in all of the classical music, in classical music, we're very, very free. We're not like in a pop music, we always have to be on the beat. We have so much space. So feel totally free and uh, come up with new ideas. Perhaps you have your own favorite fingering, which you would like to share in the comment section down below. Let me know. So you're repeating the whole thing. And then back into the first position. Either stay in the first position or go up. Yeah, here you could go up with the first finger. You could do that or you could stay in the first position. And here I would really go up on the G string.
could start in uh, first position, in the third position, with the first finger on the A string, or you could start in uh, first position and slide in, which I think would be a little bit too much. We don't want to have too many slides, but you could do it. You could also go up on an A string. Another possibility. Do something crazy, something unusual. There's a lot of fun discovering new possibilities. So, but you could also stay here in the third position. And here you go into the second position. Yeah, and remember when you shift, yeah, when you change positions, when you shift, it's never your finger that goes up and down, it's always your arm. Okay, so it's a unit. Okay, always moves together with the fingers. We never break the unit apart unless we have to stretch the finger. Okay, somewhere. But here we're shifting, so, and then second position with the whole arm, okay? That way you will always play in tune. You have to practice a lot as well, but it helps. Okay, and then we go, you could, you could play it in a second position. Definitely would be a good thing to practice because you exercise your fourth finger. Or you could play the whole thing in a third position. And then we go back to the first position. Stay there. play this in a third position. Okay, and then you repeat the whole thing. This time you could change the bowings a little bit. Yeah, you could play everything up bow or everything down bow. Never seen anybody do, doing that, but you could try. And again, you either stay in uh, second position or again, do something very, very unusual, very, very new <laughs> for you. Play it on the D string. And stay there. Totally unnecessary, but a lot of fun to practice. Yeah? So, but of course, you played in the first position. It's hard enough, right? to the third position and stay there for a bit and if you're totally new to this piece it helps practicing without grace notes hi everyone so you could practice without grace notes always stressing the first note out of each four And then when you practice that a little bit, you add the grace notes. 
remember that they come before the beat yeah they come this is the beat boom boom go up into the third position back into the first position okay you could practice all of this legato yeah it's very strange, but when you practice legato, it strengthens your fingers. Your fingers become faster, believe it or not. So that's what you could do. Or you could play four legato. Or two. practicing help to make your fingers stronger, more flexible and faster. And then when you're ready, and the whole thing repeats again. Okay, and then we come to Molto Meno. On page two, and we have a chord. We play by breaking it. Yeah, make sure not to play two and then another two, but break it. It's short, long. Okay. And we're in the third position. you've never played double stops before this is uh, not the right piece to start with <laughs> you should try playing scales with double stops yeah and so on you should practice double stops a lot before you start playing them in a piece okay but if you played them before you know that the secret of remaining on both strings is trying to play on an imaginary or non-existing strings, which is uh, which non-existing string, which is just between the two strings on which you're playing. That makes it easier not to push, okay? Not to press. So don't press. short long so here I'm in the first position my first finger is on both strings A and E string and now I'm in the third position I could go up actually with a fourth finger or with a second finger or I could stay in the third position. So there are a lot of options to choose from. Yeah, you could slide into the fifth position. Then go back into the second. And then you play the harmonic. Again, you practice this by moving your arm up and down, not just your finger. Or you go on the E string. You could actually play this in the third position. Or you could do something 
very crazy. You could play the first note in the fourth position on the G string, then stretch your third finger <laughs> and play F sharp with it. And that fourth finger on the A string. That would also be possible. It's seventh position. decide not to play that way it's definitely a great thing to practice so but let's do it in a third position back into the first position and third position again and slide in position we slide in into the fifth position and stay there carry on playing on the A string now go back into the second position and play double stops second and third fingers in the second position and slide back into the first position. This is a lot of fun. Yeah? So, these are just some of the possibilities. Perhaps you come up with your own fingering, which nobody has ever come up with. And that's not the point. The point is that you're having a lot of fun trying out new things. Now come our artificial harmonics and I made a video about that, how to play those artificial harmonics. So you basically put one finger on a string, yeah, pressing down the string from me and the next finger is the fourth finger, comes down on a string and barely touches the string. While the first one is pressing down the string, the fourth one is barely touching it. And that's how we play artificial harmonics. Yeah. So the way you could practice it is by playing octaves. Yeah. That's how you can learn to play in tune and then when you're done doing that your fourth finger stops pressing down the string and this is what happens yeah the next one is on the a string so you basically just play open a string but it's not open a string it's the third finger on it barely touching it the less pressure you put on a string, it's actually no pressure at all, the better it sounds. Yeah? And if it doesn't sound right, then perhaps you're doing something strange with your bow. If you go too far away from the bridge, they don't sound very good. Yeah? The harmonics sound better when you go a little bit nearer to the bridge, but not too near because. This is also not good. Okay, so that's how you practice your artificial harmonics. And here you could improvise a little bit and play, even though it doesn't say so in the music, but like I already mentioned, you could improvise a lot in this piece. You could even write your own cadenza if you wanted to. Yeah. 
and even with harmonics you can slide around a little bit and here you stay on the G string yeah we have a long note here but you could play this long note and then some people start really slowly here this part kind of falling back into it and again the same thing we practiced before practice it without the grace notes and stressing each four notes. You could also play it in a first position. Yeah, another possibility. And then here you could either play the whole thing in a first position or you could start in a second position with a third finger on the E string. And then go back into the first. Okay, so this is different. You could actually either start on the A string and then go up into the third position, or you could go up into the third position right away. This is a very comfortable fingering for lazy people who don't want to do too much work because here when you play two, one, four, one, four, one, yeah, you don't have to move anything for a while, you could have a little rest. Yeah, you don't have to. You can just. It's just your bow arm. Is moving a little bit more yeah because you're changing your crossing strings so let's try this thing again now go into the third position stay there and we're in D major we have two sharps all of a sudden that happened before in molto menor and happens again in allegretto so and we carry on in major in the third position you could start the whole thing or in the first and then change into them then shift into the third whatever you decide same thing here you could go back to the second position one one or to the first position. So we carry on in a third position. First position. string and first position and third position you could stay in a third position for the rest of the piece yeah Play the octave here with the open string and the first finger on the E string. And second finger on the G string. So um, here is the unusual part. It goes down 
and then here it goes up it's not yeah make sure not to make that mistake okay so it's different fingering for lazy people okay staying in the third position all the time so make sure to keep practicing it on a daily basis practice it legato practice it while you're dancing um, Practicing slowly can be a lot of fun because you notice your progress. You make a very fast progress when you practice slowly a lot. And when you practice very fast a lot, you could actually damage a lot. You could damage your intonation. You could damage your rhythm. So uh, you learn how to play rhythmically. Uh, I wouldn't use the metronome too much. I would just play slowly. Of course, you can use a metronome every now and then, but I wouldn't focus on it too much because you have to have your own sense of rhythm. And each of us have, has, has it inside, right? Our heartbeat is beating very rhythmically. So um, it's basically all about noticing that inner, your inbuilt, knowledge you have everything within so to speak yeah that's why i don't recommend using the metronome too much just practice it slowly practice legato try all kinds of different fingerings the sheet music is on my patreon page as usual and uh, so now you finally learned how to play the chadash we're not in a first position if you're a total beginner and you want to play the chadash but don't know how to play in different positions you can download the sheet music for playing it in in the first position only and i also made a tutorial for total beginners so that you can play it before you learn how to play in different positions because uh, some people just want to play absolutely everything before they can go all the way up on the violin but the best thing is of course taking it one step at a time moving up slowly practicing a lot of scales and again the scales can be so much fun you can just use your imagination and create new kinds of exercises which are so much fun that you don't want to stop practicing so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial let me know which other pieces you would like to learn next and uh, also let me know whether you like me going live or whether you prefer me making uh, videos or shorts. Let me know what you prefer and I'll begin soon. Thank you so much. Mwah! I love you.